Rule number six. Rule number six. Give abundantly. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six says this. Watch it. He who sows bountifully shall reap also what? Bountifully. Let's watch what the paragraph says. Sparse giving is short-sighted because it limits what you can receive from the Lord. Bountiful giving is farsighted because it maximizes spiritual return. What is it helping us to understand? The law of the harvest. My friends, what is the law of the harvest? The law of the harvest is cause and effect. That's a universal law. Well, what does that mean, cause and effect? Watch it, this is the law of the harvest. You reap what you sow. That's number one. Number two is you don't reap until you sow. That's number two. And number three, watch it. You reap more than you sow. That's the law of the harvest. That's a universal law. And that's what 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 is trying to get us to understand. He who sows bountifully shall what? Reap bountifully. And he who doesn't give a lot is going to reap little. That's the law of the harvest. The more you put out is the more you reap. Watch it. So the idea is this. It's not just about money. That yeah, you put out more and you'll get more in uh, in the long run. But it's also talking about love. It's also talking about respect. It's also talking about faithfulness. It's also talking about peace. Whatever it is that you want, you have to put that out. That's not only called the law of the harvest, but it's also called the law of nature. Right? The law of nature says what? Whatever you put out is what's going to come back to you. I want more love, so I have to be more loving. I want more peace, so I have to be peaceful. I can't expect to go off on people and talk to people bad and just be be any kind of way I want to, but then I want people to treat me the right way. That's not how it goes. That's not how the universal law works. The universal law, the spiritual law says this. Whatever I want, I have to put it out, and I have to put out more, perhaps, than what people are going to put back to me, give back to me, rather. But that's not the point. The point is this. Just put it out. Love people. Just like with our with our last point. Lend. Put it out. Don't even worry about what comes back, even though it will. You're basically doing this because you love people. So the universal law, cause and effect, reap what you sow. You don't reap until you sow, and you reap more than what you sow. So also understanding sowing and reaping is this. It's a double-sided coin. It's also, it, it affects, rather, the person who's giving and the person who is receiving. It's also always, rather, a double-sided coin. It's about both parties. It's never one-sided. It's not short-sighted. Short -sighted. It's always far-sighted. It's always about two people. So, he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Don't be short-sighted in what you are trying to do, but be far-sighted. Why? That's what Christians do. Christians are what? Far-sighted. Christians are far-sighted because what we see right now is temporal, and we're looking at something that's far off. We're looking at something that's in the future. We're looking to be with God in the future. Those are the things that are going to last. These vehicles and these homes and this money and this clothes, all this stuff is going to burn up. Yeah, I mean, it's important. I'm not saying it's not important, but it ain't important as what God has for you in heaven. So we can't let this stuff affect our heart and we can't be short-sighted. When you put everything that you have and all your feelings and all your heart into your vehicle or your home or your money or your job or the this or the that, it's going to burn up. But you have to set your affections on things that are what? Above. Because those are not temporal. Those are lasting. So, let's hastily go over to one more point. Rule number 8 where it says give sacrificially. Give sacrificially. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2 says this. Their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Well, let's go to that first paragraph there and see what it says. The Macedonians demanded to participate in a special collection despite their deep poverty and affliction that's second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 uh second corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 well watch the idea ladies and gentlemen the idea is this um, Acts chapter 2, when they sold all they have and they brought what they had back so that they all can have things in common. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 40 and following. Remember, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, where it says, This is the collection for the who? Now concerning the collection for the what? Saints. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, 7, and even 8. It talks about a beneficent offering for people who were less fortunate. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 has the same idea. They gave out of their deep poverty so they can be liberal toward other people. 
The Macedonians demanded to participate in a special collection despite their deep poverty and affliction. Well, what's the idea? The idea is that faith is made strong in limitation. How is that possible? How can faith be made strong in limitations? Well, let me tell you how. You put your little bit with that person's little bit and you let God tie up the rest. Oh, I think you missed it. Yeah, yeah. That's how you become strong in limitations. Well, I'm only limited in a certain area. You're limited in a certain area. When we put those two areas together, watch what it does. It still counts to be something, but then we're not finished counting because we got to put God into the process and God will tie up the loose ends and God will make this look like you had millions of dollars. God, God will take your little bit and my little bit, and when we put it together with his a lot of bit, man, you would think that we had all whatever in the world. Because God makes up the difference. God ties up the loose ends. Well, watch it now. This this liberality in another in another passage it would say trial of affliction. Well, what's the idea of a trial of affliction? Well, this trial, God is making a trial of faith, patience, and constancy out of these people. Well, you know where it says affliction, another passage talks about a trial, and God will turn that trial into another trial. Well, watch it now. We'll go through this trial, a trial of affliction, a trial of hurt, a trial of this, a trial of that, all kind of circumstances. But then when those circumstances come, faith is made active, and now it's not a trial for you to lose your life in this hurt, but it's a trial to show how God can increase our faith, how we can be constant in what we're doing, how we can what, even be patient in what we're going through and that was the idea of them giving out of their deep poverty and giving into this liberal state because watch it what does god always do he's the one that ties up the loose ends god sees further than we do just do your part watch it now so god is making a trial out of their faith patience and constancy but god is also making a little bit count you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful because if you're not, you'll look at me and you'll look at this person and you say, this is all we have. And we'll forget to put God in the equation. Don't ever forget to put God into the equation, ladies and gentlemen, because God makes a little bit count. That's what he did in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. He makes a little bit count. Just do your part. Not only in giving money. But just do, just do what God asks you to do. If you preach, go ahead and preach. Do your part. If you sing, go ahead and sing. Do your part. If you are over any specific ministry, do your part. And then when everyone does their part, watch what God does. He makes your little part come together with this little part, and he'll make it a big old part. And it looks like we're running on all cylinders because you have to do your part, ladies and gentlemen. Just do what? Your part. And that's the point. Just do your part. When you do your part, God will make all of this count. So watch the idea. Watch the idea. Rule number five, give selflessly. It ain't about you or I. It's always about the other person. Rule number six, give abundantly. The more you sow is the more you're going to reap. And then uh, rule eight says, give sacrificially. Well, what does that mean? That means I only have this much. I'm limited to do this. But when I do my part, guess what God is going to do? He's going to go ahead and do his part. So this little itty bitty snippet of a message, I hope it blessed you. I hope our little fireside chat outside of our church building blessed you today. But let's go ahead and pray. God, bless us in our giving. Bless us in whatever we give, that it'll be a blessing to your kingdom. Well, watch it, God. It's always about you. Everything that we do, all that we are, we're trying to be better and help us to make other people better as we give more funds, as we give more love, as we give more peace, as we give more whatever. Bless both parties because both parties are always benefiting from you. And also help us to understand just to do our part and you tie up the rest. Bless us at this time and in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Go in peace.